is your lala. I'm gonna eat it. So today, I was thinking we would learn how to make lao lao. It's a traditional Hawaiian food that still gets served all the time at luau's and baby's first birthdays and you know traditional festive parties. This is a tea leaf, and and Justin and I we have tea leaves that grow all in our yard. Many people in Hawaii do, and this is just the outer wrapper. This is not a part that we're going to eat, but um, it's going to be like our, our tin foil. It's going to hold our little bundle together and make a little hot pocket. And so for people who might not be in Hawaii or might not have tea leaves, you could try to use banana leaves or you could just use tin foil. To prepare the tea leaves, we're going to find where the spine is. So just kind of cut that spine off. You want to start it with your knife. But then the way I like to finish it is just using an edge of a surface and you just want to bend the leaf down. You ready for this, Justin? Can I go? And you just want to pull and then that spine's going to separate. See that? I don't know. I love this part. I just think it's so cool. I like deconstructing things. And so now your spine is out. You're not going to use that. And you have a much more pliable leaf. Pliable. So our leaves are now prepped. See how limp they are? So that's for later. Now next, this leaf, this is a kalo leaf. Kalo is Hawaiian for taro. Taro is, um, it's like this potato-like fruit. Uh, not fruit, but it's like this, it's like a potato. Um, it's a root. Isn't it cool? And so this is, this is the root. These are the stems. Those are the leaves. This is a very, very important plant of Hawaiian culture. This is like an ancestor. If any plant represents Hawaii, this would be it. And you can eat every single part of it. You can eat the root, the corm, they call it, the corm. Um, you can eat the stems and you can eat the leaves. However, you can't eat them raw and you can't eat them undercooked. And these things take a long time to cook. So that's really important to know because if you eat undercooked kalo or the leaves, um, you're going to get such an itchy throat and it's just like eating fiberglass. I'm going to start just peeling off um, the skin of this as I talk to you. And so all I'm doing is cutting away the outer part because we don't want the, you know, the dirt or the roots. Not all lao lao has taro actually inside of it. Lao lao, it, it basically, it means bundle. And, um, and it's this bundle of food. And usually what you find in it is fish and meat. Um, today, most people use pork, really um, fatty pieces of pork. Like if, they, if they're using the pork shoulder, um, they'll, sometimes they'll just actually like source straight up pork fat and throw that in with it. Um, it's known to be a really fatty, you know, fatty meat bundle. And a lot of times there'll be fish in it, salted fish. And, um, and these days, usually, um, strangely enough, but really delicious, the fish that's used in it is usually black cod, which isn't from Hawaii, um, which is, you know, known as butterfish here, but it's from Alaska. And so sometimes there would be salmon belly, which is also delicious. But yeah, so usually it's really a fatty, fatty fish that just melts in your mouth and pork with a lot of fat and um, and that that fat gets wrapped up in these leaves the you know oils just like melt into the leaves it's all super delicious but we're not gonna do any of that today because I just really want to work with all local ingredients and keep it local so we're gonna do quite um, a lean lean version of lao lao which is what we always do in this house not because we're on a diet but just because um, the local ingredients are naturally lean. So we have some venison. This is um, 
This is venison from a hunt that Justin and I did on Maui. Um, all I'm going to do with this venison is salt it and go pretty, pretty generous with the Hawaiian salt for this one because these are big chunks of meat and we want this salt to also season our our leaves that we're going to eat. We're going to put quite a we want it to season our kalo. You know, we want all of that. And then our fish is not butter fish at all. This fish is is called Enenui. In English, it's just known as a chub. Um, a firmer consistency. I mean, I don't really. It, it, it looks a little dry. It's salted. I basically the same amount of generosity I use for that meat is how much I use for this fish. And then I put it just in a Ziploc bag. You can put it in a in a Tupperware in anything. Um, and then I put it in the fridge. And I think this has been in the fridge now, being salted for three days. And that's more than that's enough. The reason why we salt it ahead of time. It's because that way the salt gets all the way through the fish and it really gives it, um, you know, a good salty flavor that flavors the rest of the bundle. But also by salting the fish, you're drying out the waters and you're making this fish like a firmer piece of protein. And because we're going to cook our bundles, usually you cook it for such a long time so that the kalo is cooked all the way through. You know, most fish will just turn to mush and disintegrate, but something about um, salting it really makes it hold up a little firmer, hold up a little more. And you can just see that, you know, you can see it's just like a nice, firm, oops, nice, firm, <laughs> nice, firm meat. And you can see the rainbow colors, the oils um, that are in this meat. Now, um, another reason why I'm using an Anui is because these days, these modern days in Hawaii, you know, I grew up eating it. Any old timer in Hawaii probably grew up, you know, if they were a diver or a fisherman, they grew up eating this fish. It was my dad's favorite, whatnot. But these days, it is known as a rubbish fish. It is known as something that's not even good enough to to hunt, to shoot, to fish for. You know, it's not it's not a hard fish to shoot. They're not known as these like prized fish that are hard to target and there's also such an abundance of them um, that they get this bad rep of being a rubbish fish another reason why probably is look at the color see how it's quite gray i think people aren't used to that i think people just want really bright red flash for an ahi or a really pale white for other fish whereas ananui it's it's never really and it's never those, it's always kind of this gray colored flesh. And maybe that turns people off. Another reason is because they just eat seaweed all day long. That's what they do. They eat limu, limu means seaweed. And, um, and so it's a very strong flavor. The flesh that, you know, when you eat this fish, it tastes like seaweed. It's not a fish that just tastes like chicken or just tastes bland. It has a very strong seaweed flavor. Um, and so a lot of times if you do, you know, don't like that flavor and you just cook it any old way, it's going to be too strong for you. And then once again, it gets labeled a rubbish fish. You know, usually lao lao, it is, um, it's a big process because the way that you normally cook lao lao is in the ground, is in an underground oven that we call an emu, where you dig out this huge pit, you make a big fire, you fill it with lava rocks, 
let the rocks heat up, you wrap bundles of food, you put it in there, you bury it, and then the next day you take it out and you have a luau. It's um, a big gathering when you're making lao lao, a big factory line of people helping out. So today we are not cooking this in an imu, we're cooking it in an instapot. And so we're doing it an easier, more modern way and we're not making a hundred lao lao, we'll probably make a couple just for the sake of this episode. One thing about the kalo leaf, is that it comes with stems so i cut the stem off and then the stems we're gonna we're gonna use as well so i'll just trim them this is another thing that's gonna go inside of our lao lao this is my favorite part of the lao lao is the lao the leaf and so i am generous a lot of people only use two leaves just two leaves and they wrap everything up in two leaves but to me that's just not enough greens and it's my favorite part. So I like to use <laughs> five leaves, which is really, really a lot. And then all we're gonna do is we're going to take a piece of taro or kalo. We're going to take a piece of fish. We're going to take some stems. And we're gonna take, um, we're gonna take some venison and so that is that's your lao lao and we can be we can make this one a really big lao lao make it like a whole meal and add add extra since we have a lot of stuff so that's a huge huge lao lao and then you're just going to fold it into a bundle so I just rolled it in and now I'm rolling this part in and so this is a lao lao, but we need to hold it together. So this is the part where if you don't have a leaf and you wanna just wrap it in foil. And so you just kind of lay one tea leaf one way, one the other way. Maybe I'll put the bigger one on the bottom. And so normally when you're using tea leaf, you can just kind of bring up all sides like this. And that's your bundle. And then um, you can take one of the Stemmy parts and wrap it around to tie it and you can kind of take the other stemmy part and wrap it around and then tie it Oops. and these parts are really strong I'm gonna just trim off that extra and so this is just your bundle and that it just kind of protects um, the inside it's okay it's totally not airtight obviously but it just serves as a protector so that everything kind of gets steamed in here it holds it in you know um, that does take up a lot of space in the instapot so you're not going to be able to fit a lot of lao lao in that way so you can get creative and wrap it any way that's going to help you fit more. So this is your lao lao using all Hawaiian, you know, local ingredients. This is something that's very good to share with people in Hawaii so that um, everyone can know how to make lao lao at home if you don't want to wait for a luau to eat one. But I just kind of thought, what about people who are watching this who might not have kalo? I've seen, I've seen taro grow all over the world but I haven't seen it a lot like in the states or whatnot so I just wanted to try to make a lao lao out of collared greens because I feel like that is a leaf that maybe people have more access to um, but mainly um, Justin grew these and they just happen to be in full size right now so I just thought why not let's give it a shot so they kind of have a stem I don't know if they're going to be able to, nope, they're not. They're not really able to remove in the same way a tea leaf is, but I do just think we should try and cut out that stem. As you can see, this is totally experimental. This could be a complete fail when we pull it out of the Instapot, but to me it's just, um, it's worth it to give it a try and just see. I don't think anything, I have to say this, I don't think anything will ever replace um, lao, which is the kalo leaf, because to me, 
it is just the best flavor in the world, so I'm sorry if you don't have access to it. You can just try something different. So they're a lot heartier. I'm thinking maybe three is enough. Eh, let's just do another one. Why not? Greens are good for you. So now we have our bed of greens. Just going to put some ananui, some fish, some taro, some stems, and some meat. Wrapping it up. Gosh, I'm so curious. How is this going to taste? It might seem weird to you that we're just putting, you know, meat and fish together. Because I think if I didn't grow up eating lao lao, that might seem weird to me. There's not a lot of dishes where, I, like, whether it's soups or whether it's pastas or whether it's any dish that I'm going to ever usually be like, oh, let's throw some, some red meat in there. Cool, now throw some fish in there. Perfect. I, yes, normally I don't put fish and meat together like that, but, um, but you know, maybe it's just this comfort food and this acquired taste. Um, but in this bundle, there's something about the salted fish and that meat and those leaves that it just, it's a good combo for, you know, I grew up eating it. So, so anyway, let's just cook these and see how it goes. I just discovered the Instant Pot. My sister gave this to us for a housewarming present and I've never used one before. So if you have a pressure cooker, you can go ahead and use that. But um, Instant Pots, I think they're just so much faster. I personally am just in love with using this. Um, I could probably fit more Lao Lao in here if I smashed it down, but I just want to see what this turns out like. So I'm just going to do the two and Justin and I We'll taste test them for you. And we just put like a cup of water. And again, just wanna say, usually I will cram four lao lao in here. I don't always wrap it where it takes up so much space. Um, and even if I do, I just smash it down and put more, maybe a little more water. I doubt I need it. I don't know what the point of that was. Um, now, you close that, you make sure it's on seal. And then I just go for manual and go for an hour. Right now it's on 62 minutes. That's fine, we can go for an hour and two minutes. And now we'll let this do its thing. And I'm so curious to try it. Don't miss the beep. Oh, you missed the beep. Justin missed the shot. Remember my first time shooting a video. So. Kimmy, I got it. <laughs> Normally when you eat lao lao, you eat it. Ouch, don't touch the top of that. Normally when you eat. Normally when you eat lao lao, you eat it with poi, which is pounded taro, um, lomi salmon. Sometimes you eat it with rice on the side. We don't have any of that. We're just going to eat lao lao. But the cool thing is, is that everything that you need in a meal is in this. <laughs> Stop, Justin. <laughs> Justin's mimicking me. Um, but everything that you would want out of a meal is already... In, a, in this lao lao, because we have kalo, so that's your starch. We have two types of protein, the meat and the fish. And we have a lot of veg because it's all wrapped in dark leafy greens. Just put it on this plate. So there you go. We're going to unwrap that. And this is our, our kalo, our taro. Lao Lao. The only reason why I wasn't open up over there is because Buddy's there, but that's okay. I guess he doesn't have to make an appearance in every single video, but I sure do love him. So that looks really good. Let's see. So we can just get rid of the tea leaves, oops, at this point because we don't eat them. So that's our collard green Lao Lao.
This is our Kalo Lala. Everyone always tells me it looks like a heart or a <laughs> placenta or something. Have a fork right here. I don't know. I like that. And then chili pepper water is a must. So I'm just going to... I'm gonna use all of this for these two Lao Lao because Justin and I both just love the salty, tangy spiciness. Okay, now let's cut it open. So as you can see, I'm just gonna kind of be cutting it. Look, see how tender that venison is? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And you can see the fish right there, how even though the venison is cooked to as tender, the fish doesn't turn too mush and it still holds up. We have our kalo pieces here that are cooked to perfection. Oh, that's more meat. And it's all wrapped in, in the taro leaf. So I personally like to take a bite that has a little bit of everything. Yum. It's just so good. It is just like, it's the, I, I can't even explain why it's so good. It's just so damn delicious. I think it's the flavor of the leaves. So I, we'll see how the colors taste, but I think it's the flavor of the leaves. It's the salted fish and I don't know. Like I said, normally La La is super fatty and oily and melty and then that's really good too, but even though this is a leaner version, it is just so damn satisfying. Okay, so let's see how the collard greens came out. So there's our kalo, that's our taro. I'm just gonna open it. This is the venison. This piece seems a little tougher, but that's okay. Um, here's a, another piece of venison. And the fish. The collards do seem to be a little heartier than the collar. I'm almost like, I feel like I would want a knife, so I'm gonna get one. That's the main difference. We'll get a little bit of meat. It's interesting to me, I'm wondering if the collards were just heartier so they didn't, I don't know, because the meat in this one's a little tougher. It feels like this could have, this one could have gone a little longer maybe, like 15 minutes more than an hour. Mmm. Not lying, it's totally delicious. Mmm. So, I would have to say, if you live somewhere and you don't have kalo and you want to make lao lao, get really big collard green leaves and just do it because it totally works. Um, I was really skeptical. It's good, but the the chili pepper water, you need that. I'm, I'm realizing that with every bite. I'm like, that's what kind of ties it all together. Well, I thought I was really like stretching it, trying to use collards for lao lao, but um, no. It, it really, really, it works. You're gonna like it. You're gonna love it. Good. Anything else to say? Um, no, I don't think so. And let's just see go eat this before our baby wakes up. <laughs>